in the house. All right. Yep. And how did that go? Hey, Brandon. Morning, Roddy. Susan, how are you? Clay's here. Trader HH. BB. Dan. Gaston is with us. Kirk's here. Larry. Peter. Be interesting to see if we're bottoming out here or if we're going to have a dump soon. Crude looks like it might be giving it up. Welcome to Chop Day is right. Uh, just high school. And uh, adult league afterwards. I uh, had a bad injury. Uh, going into my junior year, so took me out pretty good. There he is. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm still back here in Hawaii, as you guys can, my virtual paradise, as you guys could see. Hope everybody's doing really well today. Steve, good morning. Carrie, good morning. Cyrus, good morning. I'm doing pretty good today. I haven't been able to catch up. I, t You know those days where you just can't catch up? I have a lot of catching up. So I feel like I'm climbing up a hill, and it's preventing me from focusing on the markets, but that's just how some days are. Krish, Clave, uh, Helicopter Gal. Uh, Susan, Jason, Brendan, good morning. How does short interest affect share price? Do put options do the same thing? Dean, ask me later. Too early for that. <laughs> let's get let's get into all of that. Um, let's first get into the session. Good question, but ask me in a little bit. Hmm. Anastasia got profit on uh, XLC. What about Amazon? You guys took out. We took out Amazon too, right, Matt? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Levi, uh, Kirk, look for Levi well. Sounds good. Sounds good, Kirk. Tara, good morning. Oh, look at you. Made out like a bandit meta. Look at that. Give that one to Dave. Uh, I didn't take the trade and so yummy. Ah, I should have taken it. <laughs> Nothing better than a Disney roller coaster. Uh, Sue, the, the big money was made on meta. The big money was made on Meta, not on Amazon. Yeah, there you go. Now, folks, lay it on me. Lay it on me. Dell, too. Dell did really well, too. Meta is where the big money was made. Uh, yeah, I did tell you about Dell, too, the other day. I'm gonna, We're going to keep Matt, Matt busy today with Meta. No, Kirk, no puts on meta, please. You gotta cut that out. You gotta you gotta stop you gotta stop trading what you think will happen and start trading what is. It's I know it's a really weird concept, but it, it tends to work in real life. Like like look at GE right. Uh let me share my screen here. Good, good, Mike. We gotta keep Matt busy. You're doing a good job. Good, good, good. I'm doing well, Arthur. How are you? Thank you for asking. Feels like a Friday, but we have an employment report tomorrow, which is one of the reasons why I'm kind of keeping my powder a little dry. I mean, look at this GE stock, right? It keeps rocking and rolling. I mean, you know how many times you know how many fortunes were made here? Do you know how many times we've taken trades here? You don't need to you, you don't need to try to reinvent the wheel. You know, it's really ironic, but 
it, it's really ironic, you know. You know what you know what the markets are kind of like, Matt. I'll tell you a funny. I'll tell you what it what it re reminds me of. Uh, what it reminds me of almost. It's 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 really methodical. Here, let me go back to my zoom zoom screen here. You guys can see my screen, right? Can you see uh, GE, GE, Matt? Okay, good. You know, it's almost like this. You get into the market to make money, right? Uh, most people do. You, you get into the market to make to make money. And uh, Carlos says YouTube channel still not live. I'm looking at it. Oh, okay. Well, excuse me. Hard to not to do, but learn three thousand. <laughs> Try That's this. That's right. Thing, I Carlos. gave you guys root. Meta, Don. Yeah. Well, wow. I'm I'm gonna stop reading this. You guys keep. You just keep posting. Keep posting what. Uh, uh, just keep doing what you're doing, and I'll keep doing what I'm doing. But it, the market is really weird. The market is 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 really really interesting because. You get into the markets to make money, and you're told, you're told, hey, the way to make money is follow what institutions are doing because institutions are like sharks. You know, they they have that follow through. They're not always right. I'm not always right, but you, you follow you you follow the institutions, and you do that, and then you find money literally. You find you imagine yourself walking down the street and there's piles of gold right here. And next to every pile of gold is a big pile of crap. Right? But something in you, in the way we're all of us, the way we're wired as humans, it's it's you're attracted to the crap. You want the gold, but you pick up the crap. Shorting meta would be picking up crap right now. Why do you guys always insist on picking up crap instead of the, the good stuff? It, oh, well, it's overdone. But you know why? Because it's kind of like this. Every time you go to, to pick up the gold, you're like, no, no, that's not really gold. That's really crap. But crap is next to it. Oh, I'll just pick up the crap because the crap will turn into gold. The crap doesn't turn into gold and gold doesn't turn into crap. Stop thinking that it will. I mean. Like you guys are, you, you realize all day long, I try to give you good stocks, but not, and not all of you, not all of you, but some of you just, just, you can't help yourself. Oh, let's short meta. Why would you short meta? X, it's an XLC. XLC is killing it right now. L look at the, the sector. I've mentioned a few times this week. It just gapped up. Why do you think it's going to go lower? It gapped up. Look, here's what you guys need to understand. And I think this is where the problem is. And I think we need to, I need to explain this to you. When you see, you're welcome, Richie. You're welcome, Richie. When you see something like this, which I think what you guys think, and I, I want to, I want you, I want, yes, Brandon, but I think, I think I know what the, I think I understand what the problem is. The problem is, your mind thinks that what you're looking at right now is a reflection of what already happened. But that's not true. Let me explain to you why. And this is really, really important. No, nobody's ruffling, nobody's ruffling any Fed. This is, this is all good stuff. So um, when, when you're, when you're, when you're, uh, who's this? Let's see here. Oh, I appreciate it, Tony. Oh, you're welcome, guys. You're welcome. My pleasure. So I think what the biggest problem is, you think that this already happened and you're waiting for something new to happen. But that's not how the markets work. L let me explain. What you're watching right now is an auction. This is an auction on XLC, okay? In order for price to... Matt, you could see my screen. Again, I'm asking you the same question, but I just want yeah. to make sure. Okay. okay. Which, the reason price is right where it is right now is because every time a seller comes in, the, a buyer comes in who's willing to, 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 hey, I want it. 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 And the buyers are, are taking it. What you're seeing is it's not what was. Okay. 
And I think what happens is a lot of you are looking at the market and trying to reflect um, and, and are trying to reflect and, and say, oh, this is already my rear view mirror. No, no, no. This is what is. If buyers were to stop right now, right now, this and just say, we don't want it anymore. This asset and, and it could be any asset. I'm not trying to 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 to, to prove anything. To you. This asset would drop down to here in about three seconds. So whenever you see something, there's, and remember, we're always looking for stocks that are being bought or sold. We're not looking at stocks that are doing this. You're seeing an act of aggression, either from buyers or sellers. So it has to, see you later, Ken. Have a good afternoon, okay? Um, Off to quantum class. Quantum class. This guy teaches quant, quant what quantum physics. I wasn't making. I'm I'm serious when I said quantum fitting physics. So you, quantum class. All right, quantum physics. Right, Ken. Expand on the quantum. Quantum chemistry. Excuse oh me, gosh. not quantum physics. Quantum. That's worse. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe you could teach it to me in one afternoon, right, Kent? <laughs> Take me like 10 years to figure it out. All right. So, so yeah, I'm still, I'm still looking. And so, but, 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 but see, so is the market. Someone said, Chris said, uh, uh, DK and Jeep is pulling back. Yeah. So is the market. I want to see something that's not pulling back. I want to see an act of aggression. I want to see something like, uh, I want to see something like this, like in the last 10 minutes, up, not down. So my my point is, my my, my point is, I think, uh, where's my, where's back? My, here it is. I think what happens is a lot of folks believe, I think a lot of folks believe that or second guess what they're seeing is because that already happened. But I don't think you guys realize for that to stay the way it is, so much aggress. Look, it just gapped up and it's still above here. And even when the market's down, there's that's an act of aggression. You're aggressive buyers. I think it would be very different if you would be in a trading pit, because in the trading pit, you would just continue seeing these guys going, yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, they're really going at it. Whereas when you look at it on the screen, you're thinking that already happened. No, it's happening. And it's taking a lot of energy and effort for that to happen. Mickey says, looking at the chart, why why were bargain hunters told to exit? Was it in the gap? Mickey, if you have a specific question about something that I'm not covering, why don't you send me an email? I only broadcast my email, um, I don't know, how many times? Same thing with you, Eric. I, I have no idea. I'm not going to go over specific trades. I, I, I Send me an email. Send me an email. That's what I'm here for. That's why I give you my emails. Good questions. Send me an email. So again, my my so the point is when you're looking at data, you don't need to second guess it. You don't need to second guess it. You could look at this data and you could say, this is what is. Now, why is it happening? So don't start looking at the floor and looking at a pot of gold and thinking it's crap. And looking at, at at crap and thinking it's a pot of gold, because that's what most retail traders do. You 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 see a beautiful chart and you think, oh, I'm going to fade it. Why? Why in the world would you fade this? It makes absolutely no sense. Okay, so sorry about that. It's an important topic. Okay, that I needed to explain. Now, Matt, remember, I have my my. Yep, I'm about uh, to head that way. Okay, all right. Now let's talk about the market. Now let's talk about the market. So look at the market. Remember yesterday we started filling in the gap. Uh, I said the market looks pretty aggressive here. It looks pretty good. Uh, we didn't overstay our welcome on the short Home Depot trade that I gave you yesterday in the pit. And we're now near all-time highs. Again, I'm not going to repeat the same old thing, but it takes a lot of energy for the market to gap up like this. Look at the size of these candles. There's no aggressive sellers here. Now, if I see a candle like this, I would I would not say that. 
unless it's a solo, unless it's a single candle. We call this reversal. Remember I sent you this, this uh, yesterday, I sent you an image with this reversal bar right here? Anyways, so, uh, and then we reversed and went higher. Anyway, the point is, we're filling in the gap, but very little. I mean, the market's been trading for two hours, and I mean, we're we're not really cooling off all that much. So to me, it looks like we're going to come back up and rally because it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of aggression for the market to gap up and keep that gap up. It means, Mark, that that it's it's it takes up a lot of energy, but the market has energy. There wasn't that many stocks. We've been consolidating for the last few weeks. Just. To further your point, Roger, Please. we just hit the bottom of the opening range on that last candle, and we didn't have any aggressive selling come in. I like where you're going with that. So so we, we've been consolidating. We haven't been doing anything crazy. It, the market's releasing some of that energy, but we're, we're, we've only just begun. We can go quite higher. And there are some stocks like GE, for example, uh, Caterpillar, um, Meta, I think. Uh, dra DKNG, uh, First Solar. Uh, those are the four. Uh, those are actually the four stocks that I'm watching, like up close right now. Those are on, on my hit list. In case you guys wanted my hit list, those are my hot list. And we'll go over each one of them in a few minutes. But my point is, my my point is, is that uh, there's there's a lot of idiots out there who want to sell this market when the market is literally gapping up, and 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 and, and I mean, there's no evidence here. There's no evidence here of anything bearish happening at all. Zero, n nothing. But it's like, just go with the flow. It's like you're given this road, this beautiful road, and all you want to do is go in the opposite lane and hit cars. Stay in the lane. Go with the trend. Don't second guess the market. You, Your win rate, how many times have I said it? If you can get the direction of the market right and you can get a strong stock, you will make money. Now, I think I'm qualified to say that considering I've been doing that every single day for you guys in the pit. So so it seems to be working, doesn't it? Yes, consistently, over time. Yes. The trend is your friend. Right, but there's a lot of folks out there. Remember, guys, for every buyer, there's a seller. So for every guy that's buying here, there, there's somebody selling here. Right? Carrie... Look, for every buyer, there's a seller. So, so again, markets are bullish right now. We're, we're going to stay bullish right now with the market till we're proven otherwise. With that said, with that said, just because the market has been consolidating the last few weeks, we've seen a few really important stocks, uh, a few really important stocks start really coming down. And I talked about them this morning. I'm not going to talk about them again, but I will mention them to you. McDonald's, Expedia, uh, Restoration Hardware. That was a Buffett stock. Starbucks, Nike, Intel, Five Below. Remember that Five Below trade? That was a doozy. Um, so, so these are real stocks. My short list this morning, here's my short list. You probably can't see it here, but my short list was bigger than my long list this morning. Does it mean I'm going to trade those stocks? Probably not. If they start selling hard, maybe I will. I don't know. But uh, but my point is, whenever you have a little bit of consolidation, we start getting short candidates, and that increases the number of trades and op uh, opportunities that I can give you. So markets are bullish. Tomorrow we have uh, Tomorrow we have a – tomorrow we have an employment report, a pretty big employment report, and it's a full week back. Um, usually markets tend to not do much the day before a big report. So I wouldn't be surprised if the markets didn't do much till the end of the day. I haven't put on any trades yet this morning and I'm not in a hurry. I, I don't want to feel like I have to place trades. God knows we placed three yesterday, two day trades. We took in the, 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 uh, the, the we've been very busy. Um, when I say I talk about the pit because that's actually a representation of me doing what I'm talking about here. So if I talk about the pit a lot, it's not because I'm trying to sell you on the pit. I'm trying to just tell you what I what I'm doing. Um, in terms of sectors, in terms of everything today, you could see how there's really no. The only thing that's really up is real estate, and that's probably up because. We're back here. Remember I told you guys I think this is going to be false. This is 
This is uh, large institutional traders. This is large institutional traders uh, getting out of bad positions. This is not shorting the market. If you look at futures, if you look at the long, if you look at open interest on futures, it actually went down on the long bond. And I obviously did yesterday and the day before. So this is this is them getting out. This is them admitting they were wrong. Now we're back here. We're back in deflationary bond market. And what did I say? I think we're going to continue staying in this range and for the length of this triangle. And then I think we're going to break down outside. The reason I think we're going to break down downside is because I think the bond market is going to realize in the next maybe three weeks that uh, we're not going to go we're not going to go much lower. We're probably going to go stay here or maybe not go higher, but stay here for quite some some time. And that'll cause yield to stay firm. And that'll cause us to kind of continue being in this range. Again, what do I know? You believe I'm right about uh, about TLT? Mazel tov. I like it. I like it. I really like First Solar right now, by the way. Uh, I've been looking at that. Look at this. I've been looking at it all day. Looks like it's about to take out the high. I like that stock quite a bit right now. Breaking up? Am I breaking up to anyone else? Let me know if I'm breaking up. No, no. All right, I'm just going to continue talking. I can't really do much about it either, but uh, yeah, I, I thought I had radio quality uh, broadcast sound in here. All right, guys, so uh, I, this is going to not put a cap on the market. Bonds going higher is very positive for the market, and it's very, very, uh, yeah, Wes, well, that's that's because of this mic. This mic, you can put a, a screaming baby right here and you won't hear anything. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chirag. I appreciate it. That's very, very nice of you. Very, very nice of you. Now let me just repost that here. All right. Yeah, I can't really do much about that. Oh, thank you, Rado. I really appreciate it. Very kind of you. Okay. Uh, so back here, bullish for the market. If tomorrow's report sends, here's a good tip for you. If the if tomorrow's report sends the bond market back up, we're probably going to go higher because there'll be a lot less pressure for the market. Okay. If tomorrow's report sends the bond market down here, and I don't think it will, I think it'll be a really good report. I think it'll be a really solid employment report. I think we're going to go back into this channel and it re it'll reinforce that the economy is, is solid. Now, that kid now is thinking to himself, well, I'm not going to get the bike tomorrow, but I'll still get it before the end of summer. I'm still going to get it before the end of summer. God darn it, I'll get a, a job delivering newspapers if I have to to get it before the end of the summer. So we, we need to... We need to... <laughs> funny moon dog. So So... We need to get the kid to understand that the best case scenario, and the kid is the uh, large institutional investors, to believe and understand that they ain't getting goodies till end of the year. That's what we need to do. Exactly, Kirk. Ex <laughs> you guys rock. That's funny. So bullish on the market. Watch treasuries. Not seeing anything bad. Not going to spend a lot of time talking about shorts today because – it's when the market is doing this, it's probably not the best time to short stocks, but I, I will talk about them as well. And if I see aggressive selling, like for example, Lulu, remember we talked about Lulu? That's our first short. So let's, let's start talking about, uh, <laughs> he's getting a bike route instead of a bike. Uh, let's go to my two demos. Okay. So. Lulu. I would now move my stop to this pivot here at about 395, 394-ish area. Yeah, there you go. I don't know if you want to do that, Cyrus. Just I personally wouldn't wouldn't do that right now.
And if you're new to this, remember, you don't have to go and figure out which strike price. The delta will tell you which strike price. So right here, look, we're going. Uh, Dean, I can't do that in this session. But I will. if you remind me, I will do it in future sessions gladly. I just can't do it today because I have a webinar and I am pressed on time. But I'll I'll gladly talk about it. Uh, I'll gladly talk about it anytime you'd like. All right. Uh, I still have to go deeper into this. The belly of the beast. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Oh, here, we'll do a 69 delta, close to 70. Here's the delta. Here's the strike price. Notice I didn't even look at the strike price. I just looked at expiration date, which is... April 19th, 15 days to go. And I gave you a delta of 69, which is fine. And a 390 put. Next one is Nike. Nike still looks like it's, and this is not good. When you see consumer retailers, it could be China, but then a lot of like McDonald's, you know, McDonald's was on the chopping block yesterday. See, folks, it takes a lot of selling pressure on an auction to keep Nike this subdued. If folks thought that Nike would be up here, Nike would be up here in 10 seconds. Um, your stop would be right here above this level. 92.30. You would go 15 days out and your delta would be right here, 75. You could do the 69 if you choose, but I'd rather do the night. You could do the 93 or 94 put expiring April 19. Interesting, Jeff. I did not know that. What is the minimum wage? What is the min what is the minimum wage in California, Jeff? Not in McDonald's, but just what is it? Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Zscaler, this puppy still wants to go down, you know? No reprieve. Understood. I got you. Really, Iowa's that that's pitiful. Uh 198, 199 stop loss. Interesting information. Wow, Scott. Okay. Gonna have to tell my wife share that with my wife today at dinner. Actually, I'm gonna share that with T Buzz. Today's Thursday night. Every other week we go to uh tonight is rib night. Tebas, he is so he is the Tebas is so fun to hang out with. You guys don't know. 190, 190 put right here. April 19th. He's got like the best, he he's got like the best stories to share. Like really fun stories. Look at this WNS. Crappy, crappy price action. Your stop, and we talked about this one before. $53. Yeah, WNS, yes. Um there's no spreads here. That's why that's why it's a you'd have to do the underlying. The spreads are just awful. GSHD. Um not yet for this one. We'll wait for it to surpass this bar here. But let's look at McDonald's while we're on the topic. Yeah, I mean, look at the look at this chart. It doesn't have it has a lot to go. A lot to go. I don't know, Ron. I don't live there anymore. Nowhere. You have to get 15 roommates, which is why the waitresses in California are always so miserable. Right here, McDonald's. All right, now let's switch to this long side. What's an awful spread? You'll know it when you see it, Jim. You're missing a good conversation here, man. Yeah. The fast food in, in California is $20, but minimum wage is $15. Weird. Except for uh, places that bake bread. What's with the, what's with the, what's with the, uh, bet, uh, what's with the bread? Uh, I think he, people would call that, uh, not nepotism because it's not their family, but, uh, corrupt politicians. Ah. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys remember I gave you the stock yesterday? Yeah. 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 Right. Remember I gave you the stock yesterday? 
I'm going to give it to you again. If you made money on this stock, let Matt know. He's back. Uh, right here, about 53. It's a pretty volatile beast. And I think options are not that great on it. The root cause of profits. Yes, Steve. There you go. About 54-ish area. Uh, we'd go to calls now. And we'd go about uh, 72 delta right there. 65 right there. Package. Ooh, look, Matt. It touched that eight day. Uh, you know how I like those when it touches that eight, eight day, day MA. MA. Yeah, touched the eight day MA and bounced off. I like I like when it does that a lot. Uh, the last three or not the last, but the last week's swing trades. A lot of them were based on that. It's a pattern that I trade. It's like a bullish harami, but off of an eight day MA. I don't know why I'm talking about that. Let me skip topics. One eighty five seventy. Uh, 87 Delta right here, 8185 call. Look at that first solar starting to get a little solid. All right. Um, NUE, we talked about this stock, uh, copper stock, metal stock, solid stock. Put a stop right here, 196. Yes, Roddy. One ninety six. We're looking at fifteen days out, April nineteenth, seventy four delta, one ninety seven fifty. I do not, uh, Ron. I will next week. I'm going to do something about on talk about robotics. Actually, I love robotics. Robotics is like my was my big thing when I was a kid. Joan, when you see the eight-day EMA, this is the the yellow line here is the eight-day EMA. And when you see a bar touching it and, and, and at the end of the day hitting it hard off of it, like this bar right here, that's a really bullish signal for me. Ooh, look at first solar go. Told you a few minutes ago I liked that first solar stock, didn't I now? No, the red bar is a three-day EMA. Here, let me let me make it backwards. Here, let me do this. is This is eight. This is fifteen. I had it backwards. Sorry about that. Okay, eight, fifteen, fifty. Right here. You're welcome. Uh, hey, guess what my next stock is? <laughs> First solar. I really like the stock right now. It depends, Patrick. It depends on if they're strong. They have to be really strong around 3.30, 4 o'clock. I like First Solar right now. Uh, I told you that I like First Solar, and I still like First Solar. 15 days out, 71 Delta, 167.50 call right here. For solar. Your stop would be right at the 15 day as usual. Yeah, that's what that's what I just said, Fred. Root. But the option spread is crap. Uh, I still like Caterpillar. I'm actually jonesing to put on a position right now on it. I, I just need the, us to go above the VWAP. But I like Caterpillar and I like I, I'd love to see it go near the VWAP. This is the daily. Your stop, um, Yes, Susan, I really like First Solar. I do. I do. And and Caterpillar, too. A 15-day EMA would be perfect for your stop loss. It's right at 359. The 15-day the works like a charm. Uh, 15 days out, 76 Delta, 370 right here. Clyde has some new photos to share with you today. Uh, later, he'll post in the in the channel. And tap, I like the stock. I like the stock. I think the stock is going to go higher. Actually, it's not being supported well right now, so we're going to skip it for today. But I really like the stock. Something I'm keeping an eye on. Have you? I ever rated this room? Um, no, I've never rated this room. How would you like me to rate it, D.B. Cooper? We'll do a survey. I 
like Prudential a lot. 15-day EMA, perfect stop. Bonnie's doing okay. If I paint Bonnie green, I can call him Yoda because he looks like a Yoda. 115 is your stop loss on Prudential. 15 days out, 90 delta because there's just nothing there. And 115, 115 call. Thank you, Kathy. That's very nice of you. M Matt, do we have survey capabilities or, or not yet? Yeah, we do well so why don't you do this how do you guys do you guys give this room a uh five star four star three star or two star one star how about that let's do a let's do a, a honest review um yeah so i already told you where your stop is there no 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 you don't have to say it you don't have to say it we're we're going to do a survey you're going to get a survey right now you're you can you you'll be able to do a survey you don't have to respond Respond on a on a survey, uh, on a survey. Matt's going to post a survey. Yeah, that's right, man. They robbed the bank overnight. Oh. Uh, TT. Oh, thank you, Muckrist. I I think the stock is. I like the stock a lot. It's a building material stock. Stop loss of two ninety two forty seven. Sixty eight delta is good enough. I mean, you don't need to go all the way to ninety five. Tim says four star. Well, I'm sorry, Tim. It's not a five star. What can I tell you? <laughs> 300 call. And keep in mind, I'm not charging you guys. Uh, I'm not charging you for, for for this room right now. You know, that's something to consider in your in your uh your there's the there's the uh me and Matt can't vote, by the way. So you guys vote and tell us. Are they able to take it right now? Yep, I'm getting answers. Oh, you are? All right. Will you share it with us afterwards? Because I can't see the answers. Mm -hmm. All right. Take over, do seasonality. Folks, we have a class, and I'm going to be talking about two stocks that I did not talk about yesterday. That, you, that And my picks have been doing pretty good last few days. So um, take this poll. Listen to what Matt has to say. Let me know if we are a five-star, four-star, three-star, two-star, or one-star. And, uh, you know, I am what I am. It is what it is. <laughs> Nobody's going to get banned. I don't, and this is confidential. I don't know who's voting. So please feel free to do it. I have I a do. webinar in about 20 minutes. Just kidding. I'm just going to hang out with you guys while Matt does seasonality. And uh, I'm still pretty bullish on the market. Neutral to bullish. Yes, it is recorded. You can um it is recorded and you can look on YouTube as well. So good to hear that. Oh, it depends about about I usually am in a trade no more than 3-4 days. Most of you guys know that. Something just made a noise that was on yours, my yours, not mine. Ah, caterpillar just gave me a signal. All right, we'll see if it catches it. So, uh so far how's it looking, Matt? The results uh, got about two thirds of the room that's answered. Uh, eighty-two percent five stars, sixteen percent four stars, and two percent three stars. You see, guys, you can never please anybody. No two or one, though. No two or one. No, Joe, those will tell you when to enter and when to exit. And remember, we don't buy alerts for swing trade programs for like two weeks. We usually go a month or two to give you guys more time. All right, Matt, the floor is yours. And just put the let's. Uh, yeah, that's what I want to know. Where's the poll? You're going to give us you're going to show us the poll. I can't see it either, Susan. All right, I'm going to end the poll. Go ahead and end it. And woo, look at that. Nice. Nice. Hold on, let me take a screenshot of that. Good. Hey, that's good. I, I I'll uh I'll I'll accept it. You can't please everybody, but I'll take that. All right, Matt. Do your do your business and uh I'll see you guys in about uh 19 minutes.
Trip. We don't have trip. There's no trip in Bargain Hunter, my friend. You're tripping out. I don't even know what that is. I don't know, guys, but go ahead and go go ahead and uh, go ahead and, and listen to what Matt has to say. I, I can't wait to hear. Yep. All right. Yo, there's. It, Joe, if there's something to be alerted for DRI, is there a DRI in stealth surge, Matt? Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll address it. It'll, it'll all be there. Okay. Go ahead. Here is the long side. Real estate consumer stables still strong. Am I on yesterday? And basic materials. Real estate consumer staples. Invasive material. Okay, yeah. Okay, they were basically the same. A little stronger today, but pretty much the same uh, sectors. All right. And to the short side, financials. And consumer discretionary. Everything else is uh, no good. Or 10 day hold. Not looking, uh, I take that back. Slightly bullish, not awesome. The accuracy was, was making me say not great, but this is 10 day hold. So there's no edge in the exit. We'll take a little bit lower accuracy, really focus on the profit factor. To the long side, look at the numbers. There is 157, which is pretty weak. So that's 157 out of the 550 that we have here that are above 70% accuracy. That's with an exit with a very good edge. So that's not impressive uh, at all. Here's your top setups. CEG looks pretty interesting. Uh, earnings in a month, so you're good there. Silver is on a tear. It's breaking out. That's SLV, but uh, might be a little bit overdone. Maybe. Gold's right there, too. Also high. Also might be a little bit overdone. Cocoa's also breaking out. Did I say that right? Is that Cocoa or Cacao? NIB. Cacao. Yeah. A uh, little bit late for some of these. This is an interesting one. NWS was doing good. It gapped up during earnings. It really sold off the last few days. But look at this gap right back above the moving average. And it's been holding it all morning. That could be intriguing. Ideally, you know, you want a stock that's at a, what did you call that the other day? A 25 degree angle. But, which this isn't, not. Uh, it kind of is. It kind of a channel going on here, but this sideways action isn't great. It's a little bit too long, especially with what? Look at the spy. And then look at NWS. See, it's gotten weak. What do I use to judge overdone? That's one. Eight day moving average. 
Roger said how far it is from the eight day EMA. That's a good one. Uh, what was I just looking at that I said was done? Uh, silver. Uh, the Williams R is really good. The RSI, not as much. If you want short, really short term overdone, the five day Williams R is pretty accurate. However, you have to pay attention to divergences because uh, that can trip you up. This is not a, you can't take this as a gospel, basically, the, the oscillators. You have to put them into context of the market. And also look at the price if it's diverging from this. That's another thing. Um, but generally speaking, if this thing gets cranked up to the top, usually due for, due for a minor pullback. Not a huge one, but might be a good day to wait. See how fast this thing changes too. So. Here's a good one too. RSG. Garbage has been hot. Not hot garbage. That would not be good, but uh, yeah, pulling back. It's at the VWAP right now. Looks like it wants to start going back up. This honestly could be a dividend sell off. So don't look too much into this. See you later, TiVo. It is messy, Cyrus. I'll give you that. It's quick. McDonald's was a crowd favorite. It used to be. Uh, it doesn't look great anymore. Roger, is that on your short list? Yeah, figured. Yeah, most of the rest of these don't look awesome. How about Halliburton? Energy's been looking great. Here's the pro here's the exact problem with those oscillators. See this trend right here? If you had been scared to get in, look at look at how much you missed. Look at this entire move. You had one day to enter which is this one, which is actually a great setup because it's bouncing right off the moving average. But besides that, you would have just missed day after day after day after day. GD. In the middle, I guess. It's the chart. Uh, it's a little bit, a uh, little bit too far for my liking. But you never know. See you later, Adam. ITV. Yeah, probably not a bad one. I don't like this price action, though. This buy starting to go back up. And this is not. All right, let's jump over to the short side. It is. Yeah, seasonally, this is typically a very strong period. We're just not... Get, actually, I think it actually passed us already. I think it was last week and the week before that was the strongest. The, the number for the short side is 185, so it's actually a little bit longer than the long side. Today...
personally, I, I think the spy is going to start going up again. Unless the report tomorrow is crazy, I, th I think we're setting up for another rally. So I'm not crazy about the shorts, uh, seasonal shorts, unless they are just straight down. Like McDonald's. McDonald's looked good. And 10 day hold. Uh, Thomas, that's a good question. Yes, I do. Every day. And I'll actually, I'll show you something right here. Suggested. But this is what's usually always on one of my screens. Six panel chart, QQQ, SPY, Dow on the top, and then the Russell, the bond market, and oil. That typically gives me a really good idea of where the money's going in the market. Yeah, well, this is always up. Individual sectors, um, I don't sit there and watch them all day, though. But I will check in. Okay, I think that about does it. Here's the link. I'm going to get out of here so they have time at noon. Otherwise, I will see you all tomorrow. It's Friday, so we'll have... Um, the weekly seasonality graph for next week. And uh, other than that, I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great day, folks.